Hey everybody, John here. Welcome back to Catbird Hill. So, it has been an, a just crazy two weeks of weather here. Today is January 6th. It is uh, about 32 degrees right now. Four days ago, I guess five days ago, New Year's Day, January 1st, it was 61 degrees here in southeastern Pennsylvania. I was running around outside here in a short sleeve shirt and actually breaking a sweat. So uh, it's been just absolutely crazy. Uh, a little further southeast of us uh, on the eastern shore of Maryland and DC area, they got clobbered with a snowstorm early this week. We didn't get anything here. Uh, they're predicting about four to five inches, maybe six inches of snow tonight into tomorrow morning. So we've had everything here in the last two weeks. But anyhow, I'm glad to be outside. I really haven't been able to do anything outside because in addition to it being really warm, we've had a ton of rain. And it rained almost every day for about five days in a row. And our property, much like the whole area around here, was just nothing but mud. I couldn't even bring the, the tractor out to do anything. So it finally froze up a little bit the last few nights. It's a little better conditions for doing some outdoor work. So. What I wanted to talk about uh, was a, a really big thing here on Catbird Hill. So you might remember a couple of videos ago when we were introducing the firewood stand, stand that we built and put down at the end of our driveway. Uh, I got it on record in front of everybody in the YouTube world that Beth said we need a wood splitter. So once I got that endorsement and she said it publicly, uh, I did start to aggressively look for a wood splitter. Now. I know uh, there are a lot of great splitters out there. A lot of guys uh, are big on Easton made splitters. Uh, there's the fans of the Wolf Ridge splitter. Um, Hudson up in New York, they make a good splitter. Uh, I think Wood Miser even makes a good splitter. I looked at those. They're definitely at the very high end of the price range, at least in my opinion. And I just didn't want to spend that money on something that right now is just a hobby. Uh, I didn't, didn't know how far we're going to take this whole firewood business thing, so I didn't want to do a big outlay of money on something that may not end up being what we want to do long term. So I started looking through Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace and online at some different locations, and believe it or not, very quickly I found a lot of uh, wood splitters for sale. Now a lot of them were uh, wood splitters that were fairly small capacity. Uh, probably wouldn't handle the size of the wood rounds that I cut here, uh, particularly the oak and the cherry and the walnut. So I wanted something that had a little bit of beef to it. And I also wanted something that I might be able to adapt or um, modify in some way as, as our needs grow rather than have to buy a whole new splitter. So uh, today will be the unveiling of the Catbird Hill log splitter. So here it is. And what I, what I, when I originally saw this splitter advertised uh, on, face, found this on Facebook Marketplace, when I saw this, I really wasn't sure exactly what I was looking at uh, when I saw the ad online. It looked very much like a wood splitter from Northern Tool. A lot of you guys are familiar with Northern Tool uh, power equipment. They, they make a lot of good stuff. I bought a lot of things from them over the years. And what, what made me think that was the color scheme. A lot of their power equipment, outdoor power equipment, is black and red. And I saw this wood splitter and it was black and red. <laughs> and, and when I looked at some of the pictures of it, uh, you know, the, the photos that the seller had posted, it just looked like it's something that came from Northern Tool. So I went and met with him, and once I got to, to where he had it, where we met, I realized this is not a typical wood splitter. <laughs> um, so the story behind this is that this uh, young man, this young gentleman who sold this to me, uh, his girlfriend's grandfather actually built this wood splitter. Uh, from scratch using components that he purchased at different from different suppliers one of the things that made me realize this is not your typical run-of-the-mill wood splitter is the size of that hydraulic tank um, that's massive <laughs> I've not seen you know like a 
a box store wood splitter or even some of the you know better quality ones that you would rent for example from a hardware store or rental place have a hydraulic container that's that big that that hydraulic cylinder is massive the i'm sorry the filter is massive like that's the full span of my hand that's bigger than the one i have on the uh, kubota tractor the other thing that was impressive to me, one of the reasons why I went ahead in purchasing this, it has the Honda uh, GX390 13 horse engine with, hopefully you can see this down here, with an electric start, which is really nice, very, very nice. The other thing that looked very atypical was the size of some of the hydraulic lines here. I mean, this is um, probably, almost two inches in diameter. It just, it, the thing looked absolutely massive. And, and then I started to get into the steel. So I started to look at some of the, you know, the steel components that, that mount the cylinder and everything is huge. So just to give you an idea, I brought a tape out here. So that's an inch thick steel rear mount for that cylinder. The, the I-beam is really, really thick. I'm gonna to try to get on the other side where the lighting might be a little bit better for you to see. But the, uh, the thickness of the steel here, the, this top steel plate, it is, it's a full quarter inch thick. And I just, I just wasn't used to seeing that on a lot of splitters. The actual knife of the splitter is again an inch thick and I just began to look now I'm not a welder or anything but I was looking at the weldments here it just looks like it's overbuilt to the max um, the length of it it's it's almost eight feet long the uh, axle is really sturdy the wheels had absolutely no the tires had no wear on the tread uh, I was just very impressed with it, and so I began to do a little bit of research on some of the components. Obviously, I bought it. I paid exactly $1,000 for this. So I looked at some of the components, and I was looking at some of the labels here, and it's kind of hard to see. There's a, you might be able to see here, there's like an American flag uh, on this little label here. And there's some information on this label here. The hydraulic components all came from a company called Prince Manufacturing, which is a U.S. company. They're in, uh, I believe, Sioux City, Iowa. And I went online and I typed in, you know, a lot of the information to try to get some more detail on the specifications of this. I really didn't find anything online. Uh, you know, when I cross-referenced the serial numbers and model numbers, but basically I, I, what I ended up doing is I called their customer service and got one of their technical experts and gave them the information. They told me everything I needed to know. So all of the hydraulic components, uh, the cylinder, the valves, the fittings, all made in the U.S. at this um, Prince Manufacturing, which made me feel really good. The, I have no idea, obviously, where the other stuff came from. He must have assembled that maybe from other suppliers. The engine he did buy from uh, Northern Tool. The Honda engine he bought from Northern Tool. So I, I wanted to find out what the, uh, the tonnage, the ton compression rating was. You know, there's 25 ton, 30 ton, and so forth. So this cylinder, um, I think they stopped making this like in 2011 but it looks like it's brand new. So the person I spoke to said it was rated for uh, basically about 20 tons, which to me seemed kind of low for the scale of the splitter itself. I mean, you guys can certainly weigh in on the comments, but um, you know, what, when, I, when I went to pick it up, the guy, the gentleman who sold it to me had a couple of big rounds and we split them and it seemed to have no trouble at all. The cycle time seemed fairly reasonable but I don't know. I haven't really split much wood with this. We'll split a little bit today just to see what it's like. But I, I thought that was a little bit on the low side. But on the other hand, the hydraulics on this just look absolutely 
beastly. I mean, just way, way bigger than I've ever seen on a splitter before. So I don't know much about hydraulics. I don't know much about, you know, wood splitters. I've rented a few and used a few over the years, but I've never put one together. Uh, so, you know, I figured for, for what I got, for the, the bones of this thing, to me, I think I got a fairly good value. Um, the, the whole thing, uh, the gentleman who sold it to me said it was stored inside, so it was in a garage. It never, it never lived outside at all. The surface rust on it has been from when he took it from his, um, uh, from his girlfriend's family to sell for them, and he just had it sitting outside. But everything looks like it's almost brand new. I, I don't even think this thing has seen much usage time. It obviously hasn't been on the road much because the tires look brand new. So it, it's one of these things where I figured it, it seemed like a relatively good value for what I'm going to use it for. I mean. I, you know, looking at a brand new one from the box stores, I'd be spending at least a thousand dollars, if not more, on maybe something that wasn't quite so sturdy. And it looks like this thing is adaptable. So we'll run it. We'll run a few rounds through here today just to see see what happens. Um, and afterward, we'll talk a little bit maybe about the other things that I might want to do with it down the road to make it you know, more useful for me uh, as a one-man operation here, maybe make it a little bit more efficient. But we'll, we'll fire it up and we'll get some, we'll get some rounds. What we'll split today is some of the maple from the huge silver maple that fell down back in the fall. So we'll just put a few of these rounds on and, and see what happens. One of the things I am concerned about a little bit with it, there's really no platform on either side. So you know, you're going to be splitting and, and probably dropping. I think what I'll eventually do if I'm going to be doing a lot of splitting with this is I'll probably initially uh, drop the front foot, stabilize it, get it level, and then I'll, I'll detach the tractor and actually use the bucket of the, uh, of the Kubota as, as a shelf. You know, I'll, I'll load that up with maybe half with rounds, and as I split them and get them to the right size that I want, I'll just put the split pieces in the other part of the bucket. You know, that might be the, the initial uh, way I, I organize my work. So let's see what happens here. We'll do some, we'll do some splitting and we'll just talk about how it goes. Now this thing, ha I have not fired this up in almost two to three weeks. So we'll see what happens here. It has fired up pretty well for me in the past when I was testing it. We'll choke it. myself.
also, if you're a believer that everything happens for a reason, uh, then that just proved it. My, uh, my camera, my phone battery um, ran out, so you didn't really get to see the, the rest of the splitting. I, I split maybe for another minute or two, but that's probably a good thing. You know, I, I don't, don't think too many people want to just watch me split wood endlessly. But um, I hope that you guys got a sense of what the splitter can do. Uh, I, you know, I'm impressed. I mean, maple is a fairly hard wood. Um, those rounds were probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 18 inches, somewhere around there. So, you know, a decent size round of hardwood, and it seemed to have no trouble. Uh, it's such a pleasure to run a wood splitter compared to, to hand splitting. I mean, that's to me like a perfect piece of firewood. That's just, that's like a picture perfect uh, piece of bundle firewood. So it did a really good job. Um, those two rounds, I'll show you here what we created. Just a you know, nice little pile. Um, and I'll probably, you know, when I dry that, that'll go into bundle wood because it just looks so looks so good. So overall, I'm, you know, I'm impressed. And again, I haven't, you know, I haven't even begun to scratch the surface of what I want to try to do with it in terms of testing its capabilities. But, um, you know, I am extremely impressed with the, 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 the build on this thing that this gentleman apparently did himself. I mean, the welding... The, the, the weight, the gauge of the steel, everything to me is industrial grade, if not, if not better. So I don't know. Uh, I don't know what to title this video. I don't know if this should be the unicorn wood splitter, the mutt wood splitter, the Heinz 57 variety. But anyhow, I'm really happy with it. I think that there definitely are some things that I'd like to see uh, better on it. I'd love to see some extension wings maybe, you know, on either side or uh, at least on one side. But again, you know, maybe initially for the amount of wood I'm splitting, the tractor bucket will, will serve that purpose fairly well. I really like having it hitched up to the big tool rack because since the tool rack, the big tool rack is on my quick hitch, I can raise and lower that up so that I keep the splitter level no matter what ground them on it's kind of hard it might be hard to see from here but we're on kind of a slope downward heading down toward the driveway and just by you know playing around actually i think by accident really um you know the the big tool rack hitch is just set at the right point where the the whole wood splitter is nice and level so Anyhow, I'm really happy. I would love to hear some comments from you guys who are way more experienced at this wood splitting game than I am. You know, I want to hear your thoughts on based on what you've seen so far. Um, I think you saw it was really easy to start with the electric start. I mean, that's not something that would have been a deal breaker for me if it didn't have an electric start. You know, I still have two good arms um, that I can pull start things, but that's really nice. And uh, you know, it's, it's the cycle time I know isn't really fast. Um, it doesn't have an auto return. I'm okay with that. Again, I'm not, I'm not splitting wood for production sales. Um, we're just trying to split enough wood to keep our, you know, eventually keep our firewood stand going and then whatever little we really use burning in our house. So uh, leave in the comments uh, your thoughts and ideas about this wood splitter, what you think of it. Um, if you've had experience with this uh, Prince Manufacturing Company. I couldn't say enough about how helpful they were when I did call them. So I, or, I already like that fact that I got to speak to a person immediately and, and all their products, every fitting they make, I, I did verify that with them, everything they produce is made in their plant in Iowa. So that was really, really impressive to me. So I like that. I, you know, One of the things I was thinking about, if I find out later that maybe the the cylinder is undersized for the, the wood I'm splitting, although it seemed to have no trouble with this. Um, they have cylinders, the, the, the technical, the technician out there told me they have cylinders of all different sizes and compression capabilities. So, you know, maybe if I ever wanted to upgrade, it wouldn't be that big of a deal to do that, but I don't know if that'll, that'll ever happen. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Thanks for staying with this uh, kind of broken video here where we, we had a battery failure, but uh, please uh, continue to uh, give comments to the videos. If you haven't done so already, I always encourage you to subscribe. Make sure you hit the bell icon to know that when we upload uh, a new video. And please share the videos with your friends. Give us thumbs up. 
Um, if only if you like them, you know. I don't want to, I don't want people to feel like they just have to give a thumbs up. Uh, <clears throat> I'm at an age where I deal with thumbs down every day at some point, so um, that's cool too. But I really appreciate you uh, hanging in there. This is going to be a great new chapter here on Catbird Hill, and I just can't wait to start splitting more wood. So till next time, John from Catbird Hill. Take care.